Welcome to the Echo Cast, episode 137, a chat with Rawson Thurber. This is a podcast about the division, its community, news, speculation, and updates. I am Von Diesel. I do division stuff such as this podcast, Twitch streams, and YouTube videos. Please take a moment to subscribe to and rate this podcast on whatever platform you listen to it on. Please leave a comment on YouTube if that's where you're listening. It helps me with the algorithm. This episode, we'll hear my interview with Ross and Thurber, and that's it. I'll talk about the other stuff next week. Uh, you really don't want to miss this. Uh, he gives a bunch of exclusive info about the movie. Um, uh, it's setting kind of when it's coming out, or at least when it's going to begin filming, uh, who's in it, a bunch of the themes and what he's going for with it. Uh, it's, it was a lot of fun to do this interview. I don't interview people like him very often. So please excuse my amateurness and some parts of it. Um, but Rawson was, is a really, really cool guy and gave a lot of really awesome info and insights. And he is a legitimate division fan. And we are in really, really, really good hands with this, uh, with this movie. I'm, I'm more excited than I was before. And I was already extremely excited. So I'll play the, uh, interview now. If you're on YouTube, I am actually going to post the video that you can watch and uh i will talk to you after that's over today we have rawson thurber director of dodgeball we're the millers skyscraper and the upcoming red notice uh i particularly liked seeing terry tate uh office linebacker uh, in your credits as well uh welcome to the the echo cast and uh, i'm happy to have you here uh, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Uh, and I'm glad you like Terry Tate. Yes. Uh, I think I have to, or else I'm going to get tackled, uh, through the screen <laughs> here. He could probably still lay a, a good hit on me. He can still um, so I'll jump right in. I know everyone who will be listening to this wants to hear about the division movie. Um, so what can you tell us about it, uh, right now? Uh, well, there's a lot, a lot going on and a lot of excitement around it. Um, uh, and I can tell you a little bit, there's some things I don't think I can, I can probably say yet, but uh, I'll do my best to answer as many questions as I can, uh, uh, for everybody. Um, but I, I, I came aboard, um, the division just recently, but I've, I've loved it since, since, I don't know, 2013, when it was announced, I was, I think I posted this on Twitter when, when, uh, the news broke that I was going to be directing it, um, that I, I love this game. I play this game every Tuesday night with buddies of mine. I was in line at E3. I went, uh, you know, waited, I think a couple hours in line and then went into this tiny little room and they showed us gameplay, uh, not just the trailer, but gameplay. And this was back when um, there was this idea that you'd have tablets where you could come in as a drone. And I was like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. This is a game I was born to play. And of course, sadly, no tablets. Uh, no tablet drone action, probably better for all of our lives <laughs> that we can't, you know, uh, we have to take a break from the division, but, sure. um, but from division one through division two, uh, I've, I've played it, played it all and loved, uh, loved every minute of it. And, uh, so I'm a huge, huge, uh, fan. And, um, when I heard they were going to make a movie of it out of the game, I, I, you know, put my hand up and, um, and, and didn't get, didn't get picked. I think, uh, this was like, like five years ago. Um, uh, or whenever it started, mm -hmm. I just kept my, my eyes on it. I kept tracking it and, and you never know with, with, especially with movies of that size, like how long it takes to get made and people leave and come back and whatever. And, um, so I just stayed in touch with Ubisoft and, 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 uh, my rep representatives and just said, this is something that I really love. If it ever, if there's ever an opportunity, uh, I'd love to go sort of pitch my case. And, um, and, and then David Leach, who's, uh, not only a super nice guy, but incredibly talented, who was attached to direct division, uh, went to make a movie uh, with Brad Pitt uh, uh, about a you know, speeding bullet train. <laughs> and and so he, so the schedules just weren't lining up uh, with the division and uh, there was an opportunity uh, to, uh, to, to sort of pitch my case and I, and I did. And, um, and then uh, they, they agreed to, to hire me on. I, I 
can't believe it. I'm so excited. And here we are. And here we yeah. are. And I think it's talk to you. Sure. Uh, and which is great. The big thing for me is I've gotten to know a lot of developers of video games, and I kind of know that there is a path of production with that. Um, something I, and probably a lot of people who listen to this, aren't very familiar with is the process of making movies. And what, uh, you know, you look on the, I, you know, I look at the IMDb page and see pre-production, post-production, you know, all these things that are fairly vague to me. Um, so if you could describe where the movie is at to like a layman like myself, sure. where, where would you put that? Whether it's in the writing process or pre-production or. So, uh, so right now we've, we're, we've just, uh, st uh, started writing the screenplay, uh, for the movie. Um, and, and so what happens is first you write the script, right. And we've, we had a previous drafts and they were very good. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but I, but there was a specific kind of, um, taken story that I, that I, uh, was interested in. So it wasn't that those scripts weren't good, they're actually very, very good writers um, and they worked as their own pieces, but I had a different idea. And so we decided to start, essentially start again. Uh, we have a fabulous writer named Ellen Shanman who's doing the writing. Um, and she and I broke the story together. Um, you know, we talked through, talked it through with the producers and, and with the, the, uh, the stars and the, and the studio and everybody got excited about it. And so, very recently, um, Ellen just started writing the script. So we're waiting for the script to come back. And then once the script comes back, then you do, and everybody likes it, let's hope, uh, myself included. Um, I, have, I have full faith in Ellen, she's fantastic. Sure, sure. Uh, then you would enter what's called pre-production, uh, where you start the, the, the uh, actual activity of bringing all of the pieces together to go make the movie. So you're finding locations, you're hiring your crew, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera your cast you're making those choices and then there's what's called principal photography and that's when you're shooting the movie and then uh then there's post uh, uh post production which is when you're editing the movie and finishing it. so <clears throat> with any luck we hope to be shooting the movie at the end of the, this year we hope oh wow okay so i don't know what that means for um for when the movie will come out but we're we're very very excited i know jake and jessica are very focused on this movie they're very passionate about it um, and they wanted to, they want to start shooting as soon as possible. And so we're, we're aiming hopefully to start at the end of this year. Um, and that's, that's the, that's the goal. Sure. It's really been, and what's really been cool is how, uh, like you said, that people drop off and come on to these type of projects, especially before they actually start. And it's been really cool seeing their names never disappear. Um, I really like both of them. And I think that, uh, I, I know you've seen on Twitter, a lot of people saying that Jake Gyllenhaal sure looks a lot like Keener. Um, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll leave that to, to when it matters more, but, um, it's been cool to see them stick with it. Cause I think that they both, um, would bring a lot to the type of story that could be told. Um, absolutely, no, I absolutely you, agree. they, uh, I yeah. mean, Jake and Jessica, they're, I mean, they're incredible actors, right? They're both Academy mm -hmm. Award, uh, Academy Award nominated actors. They're, um, but they're just wonderful people, and they're and they love, uh, they love the division. They're they're incredibly passionate, incredibly serious about this, um, and they're they're incredibly dedicated to making it. So uh, uh, I don't I don't think there's any chance that they won't be uh, uh, co-stars in this in this film. Now, is there any and a, and a no is a perfectly fine answer here, but is there any indication or ability to talk about? where this movie will take place like in the division universe whether related to the games or before or after or a separate story sure um uh i don't think i'd be giving away state secrets by saying um that we're setting this one in new york we're gonna go division one first wow okay so that's, that's... that is an exclusive hey uh, i'll take it man uh, but that's, <laughs> that's... that's the plan that we're that we're starting there and um um i don't know how much more i would say but that's fine that's, sure that's whether this deserves an answer or not, and I'm fine either way, I have to imagine that from a director's point of view or a creator, any creative person, uh, the, the division itself is an interesting thing to conceptualize and put on film and, and try to explain to people in two hours. Yeah. Um, but the cleaners <laughs> as an enemy faction to me just yeah. seems like from a cinematic point of view, just like a really interesting thing to portray. So, hey, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it out there. I, I think, think they're I very think interesting. You, I, I think you will be very happy. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, look, I think, 
there's so much that I, that I love about the division, about the game. Um, and one of the things that I love most about it is, and I played a lot of shooters and, and, uh, you know, as everybody has, but I think why I love it and why I kept playing it and why my friends and I kept playing it. And this might sound a little corny, but to me, what's different about the division versus any other shooter is that, is that it's fundamentally about doing good, right? That, that you're, the missions that you're on are about, especially division one, right? Mm -hmm. um, are about returning power, about getting, uh, getting food to people, about helping others, right? So it's, it's this fundamentally altruistic approach. And yes, there's a lot of shooting and cover and closing doors along the way, but, um, but it's really about um, helping. And, 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 and helping other people and helping those who, who can't help themselves. And I think that is a big hearted uh, story. And I think that's what I, uh, you know, that's what I keep coming back to. That's what I connect with about it. Um, you know, and there's a lot of fundamental questions that are, that are baked into, into that, into, into the division. Like, you know, essentially what do we owe each other in society? What does one person owe to another? Right. And, and when you're in a position where it's it's a lawless state, which is essentially where you are in, in you know, in, in, the, in the first division, you know, you're left up to your own choices, right, your own moral compass. Um, when there's no sort of external force, like, who are you really, you know, how, sure. you know, how do you make those choices uh, to stop and help or to not. Um, and, uh, and I think that's really telling. And I think that's what separates the game is, 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 um, is its fundamental sense of goodness. That's what I love about it. Sure. Well, and I think what's interesting too about the game and, and the lore and the, the, the books that have been written and the comics and stuff is that it is that kind of fundamental question of like, what would you do when everything falls apart? What would you do when you don't have to do anything? Um, yeah. But then there's also that gray area uh, with the division uh, that gets explored more in division two yeah. of this idea of like, well, should the president have their own personal army? Yeah. Uh, you know, like they're, they're, they started to ask some of those questions and, and then, you know, with rogue agents and stuff like that. And then again, from obviously from a, a, a regular guy, um, mm -hmm. just the idea of having that, um, that potential antagonist of mm -hmm. not only the antagonist of the world, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the factions that have, come, you know, binded together, but then the, the internal antagonist of your, your, your brothers, your, your, your friends, your, the people you trained with undercover all these years, uh, mm -hmm. potentially turning against you for yeah. power or for whatever reasons. Yeah. Um, it just seems like it'd be fun to explore. I, I mean, well, it's, it's absolutely, that's a, exactly right. It's, it's a, it's, um, a, a, a delicious set of dramatic circumstances. There's no question about that. Um, and, you know, look, and one of the other things that I love about the division is, is that it's, it's, it's a band of citizen soldiers, right? It's not, and, and they're not, they're trained by the division, but they're not necessarily military, right? They come from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And when their watch goes off, they, they run toward danger. They, they let the toast burn and they, and they <laughs> sure. the you know what I mean? And, and I think that's a really powerful, um, theme of 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 sort of personal responsibility and, and what you're willing to risk for other people right what you're willing to do and i think that's i think for, at least for me like you know you like to imagine like what would i do if, if i had that watch and it went mm -hmm. off you know and and uh and yeah and and would i go try to save what remains um, sorry the rock i have to go we yeah. can't <laughs> keep filming this movie yeah. <laughs> Watch one off, buddy. Sorry. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, I, I th what's interesting about the video game movie uh, thing is that uh, video game movies don't have the best reputation. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think back to I'm in my early 30s, so I think back to Mario mm -hmm. and that abomination <laughs> from my childhood that yeah. was really more of a nightmare inducer than anything. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, but there's been lots of examples of that, of, uh, even the resident evil movies, which I wouldn't say are bad movies. They just no. have nothing to do with the game. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're blockbusters. But mm -hmm. if you played resident evil two and you watched that movie, you wouldn't have any idea other than, um, a few things that cross over. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think that, what, why do you think that happens now? Obviously that's been, um, corrected to a point more recently with the Pokemon movie. Um, you know, there's been a few movies that have kind of uh, picked that up, 
yeah. but uh then we have monster hunter mm-hmm. <laughs> and that kind of then goes back to you know mario yeah. times what do you think the challenge is there to connect well i mean i think it, it's a it's a really good question um and and i think you're right that you know uh you know, most movies born from video games um don't seem to either be very good or do very well um or both uh so that's not fun you know when you sign up to direct a a, a movie based <laughs> on a video game you know, sure. like, but um but i think look i, I think uh, no uh, certainly nobody sets out to make a bad movie um but but i do think something that separates the division from other other films yeah other films based on video games is that <clears throat> though there are characters in the division you know benitez and fei lao and aaron keener etc you know there are, there are those canonical characters when you play the division you play as yourself right sure you experience the division as yourself as your gamer tag right mm-hmm. um, as opposed to uh, uh halo where you're playing master chief or you play you know or your commander shepherd or even sonic right sure. um, and and so in that way i think we have an opportunity to tell a story that's that's fresh that that feels of the game but not but but isn't exactly the game right and i think it's that fine line of of wanting you know people who who know the know the division as well as you do as well as i do who play it all the sure. time like you have to, it has to be right right it has to feel like that game it has to um pay its pay homage and respect to that game but i do think that the way that you experience a video game is absolutely different than the way that you experience a film. Absolutely. And you shouldn't try to make a movie that feels like a video game and you shouldn't try to make a video game that feels like a movie. It doesn't, they're, they're different, they're different experiences and they're different both mediums. Games. Sure. Yeah, completely Right. And, and, you know, I'm going to have a hundred to 120 minutes to tell my story. Right. And I've played the division for 5,000 of- hours, right? Sure. Like it's just, sure. There, there's just no way to do it uh, in that way. So I think the right way to do it, the right way to approach it, especially for the division, is to is to tell uh, a story within this world that feels of this world, that feels like a division mission, a division story, right? And it's really going to be about um, those characters and that journey. And if you can connect to that emotionally, now all the other stuff, right? The shoot 'em up, the whiz bang. All of the Easter eggs that everybody wants that I want, <laughs> those those will all all be there. But sure, they can't, they can't be front stage, right? They can't be about that. It has to be about these characters and that story and why do we care? Or you'll have a bad movie. Simple as that. So that I mean, that's my basic approach. Is like, what is the story that I want to tell within this world, within this set of circumstances, within this situation? What is a story that means something to me? What is a story that has a good question at its center, right? Sure. And that's what I'm hopeful to do. Well, and the thing is, you know, as much as all the fans like myself and so a lot of the people who are going to listen to this, yeah. you know, we all want that, oh, my back, you know, from the, yeah. the, the base of operations in the first of game or, you know, we want all of those things. But what we have to realize is that the, you know, the, the couple million or hundreds of thousands of people that, you know, stick with the game and are big fans of it, you know, while I'm sure you would love to make a, a, a movie for us, yeah. you also have to make a movie that other people want to watch. People uh, who don't know what Shade is, who don't know what The Division is, who have never played a game. You know, you you still want to make a product that when it pops up on their suggested Netflix movies, yeah. Yeah. that they're like, oh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jessica Chastain, okay, I'll, I'll check that out. And then they watch it and they get it. They don't have to go play a thousand hours of a video game to yeah. understand what they're looking at. Um, and like how... I guess in, a, in the most general way, how do you do that? <laughs> uh, that's a great question, and that, but that's the you know that's the that's the million dollar question, right? And you're exactly you're exactly correct, which is um, it has to do it has to do both, right? It has to satisfy people who love the game deeply and truly, like me, and like sure, you. Um, and it also has to be a, a a great story in and of itself for someone who's never played the game. And never will play the game, right? Like if I do my job right, at the end you're gonna be like, "Fuck yeah, that's yeah, what I sure. want." And then the person who's never who, who doesn't know anything about the game is gonna watch the movie and then go, "Oh my god, there's a game!" Like that's I'm gonna go play it, sure. Yeah, 
That's, yeah. that's, that's, and that is the only bar, right? And if I don't do that, I have failed. Sure. Uh, and I, I will do that. But, but in terms of, in terms of how you do it, I think, I think a good example, a good recent example, I, I would say is, is uh, JJ Abrams first Star Trek, right? Absolutely. If you look at that, right, that's a sci-fi uh, picture, right? Sci-fi fantasy, depending on how, you know, we're, we're how you, yeah, sure, um, sure. But, but if you'd never seen an episode of Star Trek, it was a great space adventure and it was awesome and fun characters and a great story and exciting and all of that. But if you'd seen every single episode uh, of, of uh, you know, of TOS or, or the next generation, it did all the right stuff. There, you know, there were red shirts. Clark sure, Slim, it paid green, off. Green, green, green woman, there's the Kobayashi sure. Maru, right? Sure. All the way through. But those, those pieces, those little touchstones, right? Um, it, you don't let the tail wag the dog. I guess is, is all I mean to say. So for me, like there are all of those touches, all of those things that I personally love from the division that will, that I absolutely want to have in there. All of those, I guess, what would be called Easter eggs, but, but sure. also just like, like the, 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 the feeling of the game, right? You want all of that in there, but that can't steer the ship, right? Sure. Uh, the story and the characters have to do that. So it's a balance, but, but, for this movie to work it has to do both and it will do both now just the big thing is the main character has to have a vector that's all i'm saying <laughs> they, they have to rock a vector because okay. that's like i swear that that game that gun is just so iconic to this game yeah. and you know yeah. you have that statue yeah. and what's funny about that statue that you have is uh, most of them don't have silencers anymore mine does yeah. thank goodness yeah. Yeah, but yeah. i've seen so many people post pictures like oh man i'm still so happy i have this and you just see a bunch of missing silencers because that <laughs> thing just breaks right off so a good tip but yeah, uh, yeah the vector yeah. is uh, one of my one of my favorites <laughs> by the way so yeah sure now what i think is interesting um i feel like the last year which i know has impacted you with with red notice i saw the I've read those articles about how that got delayed and you just happened to be filming in Italy, which, you know, at the time was, yeah, good times. <laughs> um, yeah. how after COVID and even after what happened earlier this year at the Capitol, uh, for us division players, yeah. it feels kind of weird. <laughs> um, real, you know, there, if, if, if someone's listening to this who hasn't played the games in the second game, there's literally a mission where you are retaking the capital from yes. a group of ex-military uh, yeah. insurrectionists or whatever I've, you would want to call I've, them. I've so like what times. position do you, I guess, how do you feel about the idea of presenting a story about a virus <laughs> that devastates the, the world and all those other undertones um, at this time? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think there's, I guess to me, the the division with the dollar flu, right, the green poison is is a very different thing than uh, than what we've gone through, right? Sure. It's, it's an order of magnitude more deadly and more oh, yeah. serious, um, not, not literally serious, but in terms of just dramatically, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think it's 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 not quite apples and oranges, but it's a different deal. Now, now look, the the idea of of you know, for lack of a better term, pandemic fatigue from an audience, right? Like we just got sure. out of this, and sure. now you know, and now there's a movie that I don't want to live in that space. Sure. That's you know, I, I can't, I, I I don't know if I don't know how 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 an audience or a lay audience would react, but I I will say this that the movie that I want to make. Is, you know, is not going to be a sort of um, a self-serious, grim slog, right? It shouldn't feel like, oh God, I don't want to watch that. That's going <laughs> sure. to be a real bummer. It should be exciting um, and Absolutely. harrowing and full of jeopardy and and heart and a little bit of humor. Sure. Uh, you know, so so I hope that that the story itself, right, and the people themselves and the characters themselves will carry the day there. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great question and there's not really a great answer to it because I don't think anybody knows how people are going to feel 18 months from now about it. Sure. Um, and I hope that the, the story and the film itself don't feel like in finger quotes COVID, like it should feel like it's its own different new thing. Sure. Um, and, um, 
you know, and, and, and but, but what, the alternative would be don't make the movie. Um, it, I, which we all don't want to happen. I don't want that either. I <laughs> sure. love, I love the game and absolutely. Um, and, I, and I want to, and I want to do it justice and I want to make the greatest division movie in the history of, of cinema. Um, sure. And maybe the first one. <laughs> as well, well, the thing that I, when I've thought about it, cause I've even talked to some of the developers of the game of like, what's it like developing this game right now? Like what's it like being a part of this experience that hits oddly close to home and, and something that I've thought of and that, other people have said to me as well is it's kind of like that walking dead thing yeah. where yeah at first the walking dead was about the zombies but then it's about the people it's it's yeah. about you know the enemy is not really even the zombies and you know after a season or two of and i i felt that way especially about division two but even division one yeah. you know, you're coming in weeks after the the events yeah. and really obviously the virus is like a subplot Mm -hmm. but it's not the main character and right. and that's where i felt like whether it's the game or your movie or any other media that gets made um yeah. is that you don't have to make the virus the star yeah. which therefore keeps that you know fatigue from being so much of an issue yeah. um but it, it becomes that human human story rather than yeah. that human versus virus uh, you're exactly right that it's that that the only thing an audience um will ever will ever care about in any any movie, any story, are characters that they care about. Sure. That's it. Um, and so if you don't have characters, then you don't have a story. Um, and that's that's what we're trying to do. Um, sure. and, and I and I think you're exactly right that that the 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 situation that they're in is is a pandemic. But the also the difference, an interesting difference is obviously, you know, COVID is 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 a you know, real and horrible thing. Um, the difference in, in the division is, you know, Gordon Amherst designed this in a lab. This is this sure. is a biological weapon that was created and intentionally released to That's harm purposeful. the maximum amount, amount of people, right? This isn't a, a naturally occurring event. Sure. Um, so it's it has a, a, a different a different spin right off the, right off the bat. Um, so yeah, in terms of COVID fatigue as it relates to the division. It you know it it either will be a problem or it won't be a problem. But either way, I'm going to tell a great story. And, yeah, and great. Hours. Yeah, I do have a so a couple of the questions I had uh, written yeah. down here were actually directly from some developers uh, at Massive. Yeah. So uh, the first one I have for you is from uh, Frederick Thylander. So he uh, is anyone listening who's in, in the community knows him very well. He's known as the Gun Guy, um, <laughs> and uh, people will appreciate he was um a developer on one and two and oh, um his question was um what skills would you most like to see in the film uh whether it's seekers or turrets or you know mm -hmm. what are what would you like to portray well first of all i'd just like to thank frederick for making and working on division one and two he's mm -hmm. giving given me i think literally thousands of hours of, of enjoyment um so just first of all thank you um and then skills yeah i mean that's a huge huge part of it right sure uh, and so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of greedy and there's a bunch I'm going to, I'm trying to put in, um, uh, seekers for sure. I'd Absolutely. love to see, I'd love to see a good pulse. Uh, oh, yeah. that's I'd, iconic. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> uh, uh, obviously drones, obviously mm -hmm. turrets, uh, both flame and, and, uh, and regular old ammo style. Um, those are all of those for sure. Uh, I, I think I've got a pretty cool spot for a hive moment. Um, okay. Uh, and, um, I think, you know, that's, I don't want to go too much further. I'm trying that's to fine. figure out, trying to figure out a spot for a great echo. Um, and I think I've got one. It's uh, such a cool storytelling. Isn't it, isn't it cool? Oh I, remember my gosh, when, man. I remember when I saw it the first time I was like, why have I never thought of this? This is mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we definitely like, look, part of what's so awesome about the division is the tech, right? Sure. The tech is great the 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 amount of um of costuming and gear is is fantastic and the aesthetic all, is so yeah, cool <laughs> right. so all, all of that all of that has to be a plus and mm -hmm. i want to put i want to put all of it in or almost as, sure. as much as i can without as long as i don't sink the ship um uh I, i'm i'm gonna be shameless about, sure. about using as much of it as i can um so that's a 
that's, I don't know if that answers the question, but yes. Yeah. Uh, I love it too much to not want to put it in. And that's also like a really cool part. I hope, I wish everybody got to, got to direct, uh, direct movies. It's, the, it's a really cool job, but what's going to be so specifically cool about uh, making division is that, is that I'm going to have an entire prop department and an entire armory department, an entire wardrobe department, all oh, yeah. bringing this stuff together. Sure. I'm going to, I'm going to get to look at early designs for the turret and go, it's a little more of this, or it's a little less that, um, you know, it's, it's just going to be, and you, you just might have to try it on. I mean, you I'm might not, just have to. If you think I'm not trying it on, you're out of your mind. I'm going to, I'm going to walk <laughs> sure. home. I'm gonna open, you know, honey, I'm home. I'm going to, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, the watch, like we get the, the watch and get the Isaac brick. I mean, this is, sure. I'm trying not to fangirl out too much, but, uh, you know, I think I might have to. <laughs> you do you. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Um, another question I have from one of the one of the devs is actually from the creative developer of both games, Julian Garrity, Love it. Uh, who, I, who I know you're familiar with. Um, he says, uh, when was the first time you saw the division and what reaction did it evoke from you? And did that change over time? Uh, first, like, like I think I said at the top, the first time I saw it was at E3 in 2013 in uh, the LA Convention Center. And... Um, and I saw the the demo, and my my reaction was like my jaw was on the floor. I was I was like I can't believe how beautiful this game is. I can't believe that it works this way. I personally love co ops. Like I play with my mm -hmm. buddies, so like I'm not a, a you know I play I started playing MMOs way back in the day, um, and I played Star Wars Galaxies and uh, uh, Lotro and uh, Lord of the Rings Online and, and City of Heroes, and so I, I I'm a big co op guy, I'm a big MMO guy too. Used to be. Before I had kids, now I don't have any time. Uh, but, <laughs> I understand. But, uh, yeah, uh, but um, yeah. So my jaw was on the floor. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how photo real everything was. Uh, the, the attention to detail. Like I'll, I still will be playing with, with playing the game with buddies, and we'll stop and we'll look down at our feet, and there's a puddle of water that has a rainbow glisten from fuel mm -hmm. in our at our feet, mm -hmm. and we're just running through. Like it's we can't. It's 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 stunning. This game. The, the 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 graffiti uh, throughout is beautiful. The the environments the you're walking through snow in, in Division One and you, your footprints show up. Um, you know I remember the uh, I think it was the alpha or the beta. I was in the dark zone uh, and and uh, and it was it was it was a bit bit of a snowstorm and there was backlight coming from a sodium vapor light on mm -hmm. a on a street light. It's like the uh, God rays kind yeah, of. Yeah, and I, I oh. was just I couldn't really see, but it was, and I also then I just got I got killed by like four guys with fancy well, shots. Naturally, yeah. And I was yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> awesome. But um, but uh, boy, I think I think that the the thing that that I that I that I keep returning to about the division is not only is it fun and the gameplay's great and, and the missions have a sense of purpose, a sense of genuine setting things right, helping others, but it is just flat out gorgeous. Um, every sure. time. Yeah. Sure. It's just and cool. <laughs> it's, and I'm so with you. Absolutely. And, and division one and division two feel so different, right? Because like your, mm -hmm. your, your Christmas time in New York city in division one, and there's this weird haunting sense of a, of a Christmas that never happened or a Christmas sure. that wasn't good for everybody. Right. And it's this eerie sort of um, juxtaposition of these cheery seasons greetings you know christmas balls and, and christmas trees against music like, even yeah yeah music mm -hmm. of course and, and a burned out car and then when you're in in washington dc it's fourth of july it's summertime right and you have but it's 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 hot and overgrown and abandoned and um and there's still christmas stuff and there's still fourth of july mm -hmm. so there's fourth of july like like ragtag Fourth of July stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know. And I read this. Um, sorry, I don't have to go off on a on diatribe, but I, I read this one of my favorite books I've read in a long time was by this uh, author named Rick Atkinson. He wrote a book called The British Are Coming, which is a first of a planned three volume set of about the American Revolution. And I read. Uh, uh, spoiler alert: we we win. But um, <laughs> but oh, yeah, man. I'm sorry. I, I, mean, uh, I was I was uh, on my I was on my heels. <laughs> But, but I, the book is unbelievable. If yeah. anybody likes likes to read about history, it's just beautifully written. Two-time two Pulitzer Prize winning author. Um, anyways, what's what was part of what was fascinating about that is how 
you know, how, how, what an utter miracle it is that, that America exists, like a, almost a literal biblical miracle. There were sure. three separate times, the beginning of the, uh, the American Revolution, where we were saved by a change in the weather. Sure. And, right. And so, but what was amazing about that is that, is that revolution was about, uh, uh, you know, the army that we stood up against, the British army was the greatest army, standing army anybody had ever known. Ever. And yeah. We, yeah. We stood up to them and we were farmers and cobblers and blacksmiths, right? Our officers were just shopkeepers. Like we were, it was literally a citizen, so, citizen soldiers, right? We banded together to protect something that we believed in. Sure. And, and how that to me connects to the division is it's the same thing, right? This is not, vision one especially, is not a post, uh, post-apocalyptic story. It is a mid-crisis story, sure. right? We have the opportunity to, to, you know, society is balancing on a knife's edge and it is up to us to save it or to not, right? Sure. It is up to citizens to do that. And I think there's something deeply, deeply resonant about that and deeply patriotic about it. Not, not, not in a jingoistic term, not, you know, American patriotism necessarily. Just Although, in general, just humanity just general. patriotism. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, a human story. So, mm-hmm. um, Sorry, I got off on, on that, but that, that just when, I, when, I, when I'm in Washington D.C., I uh, playing Division Two. I always I always think about about that book and and, sure. and, and, and sorry. Uh, what's what's the next question? I apologize. To, I so know. I don't want to keep you for too much longer, but well, I'll hit you with a few kind of quick questions sure. uh, that came straight from fans and. Um, I've, my, my Twitter has never been as busy as oh. since you and I decided to do this. So, All right. so thank you. And I'll apologize to you too, because there's some weirdos in our community and I've seen you tagged in all kinds of weird stuff. So <laughs> <It's> all <laughs> but right. that's okay. We're passionate. I'm, I'm a member of this community, so I'm all, all about it. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. Um, so I know one that I have to ask or else I'll get in a lot of trouble is are hunters a compelling part of the game to potentially include in the movie? Yes. Perfect. Um, so the first question was whether it's going to be in New York or not, which we've confirmed. Um, let me see here. Um, I think you've kind of touched on this, but more of in a summary, is there like a very specific or particular part of the division and what it is that you think will touch audiences, no matter whether they're fans of the game or not? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've, I've blathered on a lot about this, but essentially, it is it is the fundamental question of of um, of, of what do we owe each other in a society? What are what are you sure. willing to do to to save what you love? Um, uh, and and how do we as a society help each other or not? You know, are are you fundamentally a selfish person or are you fundamentally a selfless person? Um, sure. And that sort of in these moments of crisis, right? Uh, that stuff come is laid bare in a really dramatic way. Uh, another one that I'm actually a big fan of as well is um, how what will the process look like of the score of because Ola Strand, who we're all, he, I mean the the soundtrack to the Division One and Two, even if you don't like the games, yeah, is just so the synth and just oh, it's so cool. It's the best, and I have the best answer. It, I love love the the soundtrack uh, in, in the Division both One and Two. And, um, and it's funny, I was working on the story early and I put on my headphones and I fired up Spotify and I put on the Division uh, soundtrack. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write, about the, write about the Division and listen to the soundtrack. But my heart started pounding so much that I couldn't concentrate sure. on writing. Yeah. I, it was just like a Pavlovian response. So I had to turn, turn it off. But, so Steve Jablonski, uh, who is uh, an incredible composer, he, he did the score for my last movie, Skyscraper, and my next movie, Red Notice. He will be doing the score for The Division. Uh, he, you know, uh, did all of the, I think, the Transformers stuff. He does okay. a lot of Peter Berg. Anyways, here's the here's the cool part. When I called Steve up and I'm like, hey, Steve, I, I, I got my next gig and I don't know if you're too busy, but that, and I started to explain it to him, you know, and he goes, wait, are you doing The Division? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Do you know it? He's like, do I know it? I love it. I played. He like ran off cool. the Zoom screen and came back, and he brought his he brought his um, division. No way. Actually, literally, <laughs> the truth. and it was like it was like me. It was kismet, right? I was like, meeting, sure. You know, I'm like, well, yeah, you're yeah, you're fucking hired. Like, yes, like yes. And so so Jablonski is going to hit it into the parking lot, and uh, and he and I have had many many. He's already got like the synth. Um, he already has like a special synth he's picked out for it. <laughs> he, so he, it, it will be, 
it will be an homage uh, in, a, in, in a real way to the, to the game music. So fear not. We got awesome. that covered. And the final question I have, and yeah. I'll let you go, is what role is the rock going to play? <laughs> uh, I can't. If he was going to be in it, I can't. I could never say. I could never hey, say. Hey, he'd be a great Joe Farrow. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, he's that I'll, big giant. You know, I'm yeah, just, I'll, I'm just I'll, throwing that out there. I'll let him know that that uh, that you're pitching him for uh for number three on the call yeah, sheet. Just just mention me. He probably knows who I am. It's 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 no big deal. It's he, he might. He might. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, D, uh, the Rock's great. He's uh just the prince of a guy. Um, but uh, I wouldn't hold your breath. Yeah, it's, that's fine. I guess I'll, I'll take that answer. Well, I really, really appreciate it. Um, My pleasure. What, uh, I know you have uh, your, uh, where can people find you? Oh, uh, very simple. Uh, at Ross and Thurber uh, on Twitter uh, and then Ross and Thurber on, on Instagram. Uh, I'm not, I'm not great with social media, uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, but so if you, if you, if you tweet at me or send me something and I don't respond, it's not that, uh, I don't care. It's probably that I just haven't seen it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, happy to answer any, uh, any questions anybody has. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll talk, uh, talk another time. Absolutely. Okay. And there it is. So my interview with Rawson, uh, I'm hoping that maybe if I didn't do too bad of a job, I can pull him back in, uh, you know, closer to when the movie's actually done or finished or after it's come out, uh, we'll see if I can get him to make some time for me. If I didn't make too much of a fool of myself. Um, I do want to thank, uh, this month's Patreon supporters, Hassan, Christian, Darren, Tim, PK, Ron, and made man made golf. Please, uh, if you want to check out my Patreon, go to patreon.com slash bondiesel. I do not run ads on the podcast anymore. So if you can support that way, I would very much appreciate it. Uh, I am also raising money for Extra Life if you would rather support that way. I'm raising money all year. Uh, my goal right now is $250. We're 35 bucks away from that. Uh, I have goals, I think, all the way up to 1000 or $1,500. Um, I would like to raise as much money as possible. Um, so if you're willing to maybe even support in that way instead, I would very much appreciate it. And that's going to be it for this podcast. So check me out on Twitch where I am Bon Diesel on there. Try to stream a few times a week. You can check me out on Twitter at Bon Diesel or at the echo cast. If you want division only news, if you want some cool echo cast or Bon Diesel merch, check out streamlabs.com slash Bon Diesel. That's all I have. So until next time. I'm